What's up, Mom Nation? It is Real Estate Katie, and I am back with another episode of Live and Learn. And I'm so excited because we have a returning guest, Diana. Welcome, Diana. I feel like I need like a round of applause button or something for you. I'm so happy to be here. Thanks for having me back. So exciting. Uh, oh, yeah, absolutely. We had such a great talk last time. I know that it was super helpful for everybody out there. Um, and I'm really excited to dive into this topic because it's kind of personal for me. Like, I, I don't know if I told you this, but I am dying to write a book. I feel like there's so much about the real estate industry that is unknown. It, it's, a, it's like, you know, there's these documentaries coming out, like the secrets of this and the secrets mm -hmm. of that. I think you've probably seen these yeah. documentaries that have come out lately about like big brands. And there are some secrets to real estate, let me tell you. And I feel like it's important to get that message out, especially to women that are entering the real estate industry, because it's not what it looks like. Right. I'm so excited to hear that because this is also a, um, a subject that is near and dear to my heart because I started out in the beauty industry. I don't know if you knew that, but I was a oh. professional uh, hairstylist. Um, and I, during the pandemic, I had to pivot because when I wasn't able to do hair, um, I had to ask myself, what could I do um, in order to keep money coming in? Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I started looking into was um, creating a course and or an, a book based on my expertise. And awesome. so um, not only did it help me to grow as a person, um, and to continue to reach my clients, but also greater audience, but it created a, an additional space for me to continue in, not only in the beauty industry, but for me to expand my, expand and share my knowledge on the online community. So the online education community is booming. So if you don't feel like you're gonna, an expert, I'm going to talk to you about how you can still create a book, a podcast, a channel based on your expertise and what you know, just your knowledge in itself and whatever you're doing can become a book. And I'm so excited to share that with you. Well, let's dive right into it because I'm like, oh my gosh, that is so juicy, Diana. I need to know and I need to know right now, like all of it. <laughs> so exciting. So um, let me just tell you, so um, you can pr pretty much create a book based off of based off of anything. And I'm going to give you a couple of ideas. You could start by creating a memoir or an autobiography. Um, How-to guides are very popular. Mm -hmm. The wellness industry is very, very popular. Even relationship advice. Um, people are always looking for help with relationships or family advice. Um, Self-help, developmental, personal finance, real estate, like you mentioned, real yeah. estate, poetry, um, it doesn't even have to be um, even on the professional scale. It can be short stories, children's books, coloring books, um, even coloring books for adults have become very popular. I've heard that. So if you're an artist, then there you go. Yes, definitely. Um, fiction, uh, comic books, fantasy, photography books. If you like to travel, maybe you like to hike travel and um, nature. Gardening books are very popular too. Family recipe books, science, technology, even humor and satire have grown in popularity. So there's, that's just a handful of ideas and you, the list goes on and on and on. Basically, whatever you are good at, there's somebody that's looking for a guide or a book and you could create that. Totally agree. And I love where technology is going. I mean, it's rapidly moving always, right? Um, but I love that there is now the audiobook option yes. too. So you can do the paper book for those that like to actually read the words on paper. But if you're anything like me, I'm constantly moving. Like for me to sit down, sit still, that means my eyes are closed. Otherwise, I'm not sitting still, right? So I'm working out or doing my laundry or whatever, and I've got something in my ears, and it's usually a podcast or an audiobook. And so it's been really cool to start diving into the world of audiobooks. And I think that that is a great piece that people can add to expand the exposure of their, of what they put out. Absolutely. Absolutely. So there's just like you said, there's the audio, there's, I would say three, if not more formats. There's a printed format that you can create a book. 
There is a digital format where people can download it right to their Kindle app right. or their phone. And then there is the, um, the audio. So there's three ways you create one book and then there's three ways that you can create an income from that. That's awesome. So you had mentioned self-publishing because when I think of, so I've thought of it because I really want to write this book. And when I think about it, I'm like, oh my gosh. So am I going to have to get someone to help me write it? And then do I need an editor? And then do I need somebody to make sure my grammar and spelling is right? And then do I need to find somebody to publish it? Like this seems like a lot of somebody's. Seems like, yeah, a lot of somebody's and a lot of money going out when you're on a small budget. Right. You just don't, maybe don't have the time. Time And the thing that I've learned in creating my eBooks and the guides that I've done in the, in the, in the past is that um, when creating a book or novel and you go to a publishing house, it can take a year to two years for them to actually get it into print. Wow. And I don't know about you, but I didn't want to wait that kind of time. Yeah. I'm not patient. Yeah. I wanted to create the book. I wanted to get out there. I didn't want to spend all of the money. I didn't want to necessarily even have all of the back end inventory trying to get all the sales out. So I researched different ways that I could create a book and self publish it. Um, KDP, Amazon is one platform that you can use to create a self published book. Um, another one would be called Booksy, or excuse me, uh, Book Baby. Ooh. There is also Elite Authors and Lulu or Ingram Spark. These are all self-publishing free to low cost platforms that you can use to create and publish and um, get exposure and and host your your book. And they have all different formats available, either the print, the digital format, and then the audio, depending on which direction that you go. Cool. So you would send your completed version to them and they would create these different versions out of it. Yes, correct. Okay. Yes. So if you like, we can walk through this walk through the steps of how to get this started. I like, yes. Excellent. Okay. So you want to start out with planning and conceptualizing. So it's basically define your book's purpose and your subject title and whatever expertise you want to, you want to create. Then I would suggest creating an outline for your book. You have to have a beginning, a middle and an end just like any store or any book. Um, And then decide on a budget and a timeline for your project. How much money do you wanna spend or invest in it? And then how long are you hoping or planning to have this published? Um, And I wanna say in the very beginning that you wanna allow time for you to write the book. I was ready to just kind of create that book and, and knock it all out. And I didn't realize once I got in there, the the outline is so important. Once you get in there and you start writing, ideas are going to start to come to you. And then you might take a pause and then then you might feel like you have writer's block. So I want you, I would encourage you to be patient when you are creating this book and allow it to come to fruition um, before you start moving into the next steps. Um, So writing your manuscript is going to be, like I said, probably where you spend the most time. Um, So I suggest following your outline so you kind of stay on those key points and not to kind of go off track, rather write too much or not enough. That outline is really going to be key in keeping you focused on um, getting getting to the end quicker. Mm -hmm. Good point. Then, Then you can revise and edit your content. Now you can go the option of hiring a professional editor, but if you are on a budget like I was, you can also use Grammarly. Are you familiar with Grammarly? No. So Grammarly is a free online um, editor that you can download right to your Google or to your Safari. You can even use it when you're writing scripts or you're sending a letter. It will help you. There's a free version and there's a paid version, but the free version is excellent. And it will um, go through all of your texts and it will proofread it for you. So and then. Cool. And then it will also give you um, additional ways to rephrase it, you know, kind of make it change the tone or suggest, suggest the sentence be worded differently. Um, awesome. Another one that I like to use, you're, I'm sure you're familiar with this chat GPT. Yeah. So chat GPT and Grammarly have become my best friend when I'm having a bit of writer's block and I need a little bit of um, editing and I don't 
I'm not, I'm not in the, it's not in the budget for me to outsource or to hire a professional. So these are going to be really helpful and you move in the needle. Love the use of technology. I mean, we've got it, so let's use it. Yeah, definitely. So then after you've written and you've edited it, then you want to move into your designing and your formatting of the book, um, putting it into um, chapters, um, adding uh, page numbers, uh, creating the design style where you want it, whether you want it to be in paragraph form or magazine form. And what I mean by mag- magazine form is that when you uh, read a newspaper and you notice that everything is kind of in a block style versus yeah. in paragraph. So there's different ways that you can edit your book, and that would be all um, preference. Interesting. Um, And then for editing, formatting, uh, creating your um, book cover and your interior layout, you can use another free uh, program called Canva. I love Canva. Love Canva. And Canva has done is amazing that it's expanding on all of their tools. So more and more, they're making it easier for people to create endless, endless things. So I would suggest, and I use and love Canva because it's very user-friendly. Uh, you don't have to know coding. It's, it's pretty much um, copy and paste, drag and drop, so easy to do. And you can create the full book from the, the, cover, the cover design and format your book pages all, all in that same program. Wow. That's great. Yeah. Canva is so extensive. When it first came out and I stumbled upon it, I was like, oh, this is cool. It does a couple of things. And then all of a sudden it just exploded. Yeah. Like I said, they're adding more and more tools to just make it easier for us to create and design digital products. Um, It's great for podcasting as well, creating a channel. So um, if you haven't yet tapped into Canva, I encourage you to do so. I mean, it's just going to open up a world of creativity for you. Totally agree. Yeah. Okay. Then we move into your print and your ebook production. You want to make sure that you're uploading and um, submitting high quality files. And again, Canva is going to help you do this. Um, you would pretty much uh, download a PDF format if you're going to use um, something like Amazon KDP or Book Baby. It would just be your completed uh, project file in a PDF format. And then you would have a separate PDF uh, cover page for the outside cover. So you'll, there'll be two different files that you'll be submitting. Once you choose your publishing platform, and again, it can be Amazon KDP, Ingram Spark, Lulu, BookBaby, Elite Authors, um, they're going to send you a proof in digital format and or you can also get a printed proof. I would suggest doing one and or the other so you can see what the book looks like before it goes to actual print. And then from there, you can see what needs to be revised, if the font looks um, big enough, small enough, if you like the way the colors came out and your book cover, if you're just over, if you're just happy with the overall look and the content of the book. I always highly suggest getting a proof. Then from there, you can move forward with um, the actual distribution and, and printing and um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, distributing. distributing. Distri- yeah. So, so say you were to use Amazon, they would print out the copies as they sell. So they would create the copies as they sell. So you don't have to hold boxes and boxes at your house kind of thing. Correct. You do not. You do have the option to purchase your own copies. So you would purchase printed copies at cost if you wanted to house or have a small inventory. Maybe you're going to go to an event and you want to have things out or you want to sell them on your website. But you don't have to purchase thousands of books waiting to sell. You put it on the Amazon platform and they print and they um, send to your buyer as it's purchased. See, that's nice. I think that's great because I mean, I never did this before, but I can imagine back in the old days, I can just see boxes of books everywhere. (laughs) You know what I mean? Absolutely. I mean, just, I was thinking about just having the storage space, let alone purchasing the books in advance and not knowing if I was going to be selling them quickly enough. Right. Exactly. Okay. Um, So then from there, 
um, what is going to happen when you upload to these platforms is that they're going to um, issue, issue you what's called um, an ISBN number. And um, then you're also going to register for the, the copyright. So this is gonna protect anybody from stealing your content or reusing it or trying to, pr uh, trying to print copies that, you know, of, from, your, from your work. Mm -hmm. But IBS number is pretty much um, the barcode that would go on the back of your book. And Amazon, um, BookBaby, a lot of these platforms that I mentioned will do that for you. So you don't have to go out and find another company to create that for you. It makes it that, very easy. That's nice. So it's like a one-stop shop, basically. Yes. Yes. So once you get your book on the platform, um, you want to set your price. And I would encourage you to um, set your prices and considering factors like the production cost, your marketing pricing, and your royalties. Amazon, for instance, um, takes about 35 to 40% of the royalty or the, the cost of your book. Um, and you have full control on how much you want to charge the, for the book. Okay. The percentage that Amazon takes doesn't change. It's still right around 40%. So the higher that you price your book, the more you're going to make, but then you want to consider, you know, you don't want to price yourself too high. You wanted to make it um, comparable to, um, you know, something that that's going to sell and, but still, still enough profit for you. Mm -hmm. um, so take all of those things in, into consideration. Um, your Amazon is basically taking a, a printing cost for you. And then there's, there's small cut. So um, um, when you set your price, consider all of those factors. So would you say just look at in your genre what other bestsellers are going for and yeah. or I mean, would you look at bestsellers or what what would be your gauge on that? So I would do uh, both check out bestsellers um, and then also check out your genre and the number of pages is also going to make a big difference. Oh. So people who are make, creating books that are have more pages or more content you're able to charge more. If it's just more of a guide um, and it only has approximately 20 pages, maybe, you know, the difference between a small coloring book versus a novel, your price is going to have um, be, be varied in, in that way. That makes um, sense. So it depends on what the actual product is, of course. Is there a rule of thumb or like a typical price range that you can expect to charge or that most people charge, or is it really just across the board, depending on your product? It's kind of, uh, it's kind of across the board and um, the, the demand for the product on, on this, this subject. Um, but just kind of what, I, what I've noticed um, is that smaller books under uh, 50 pages go, are priced anywhere from around $5.99 to $12.99. Okay. Larger books that are over 100 pages to two, 300 pages, they are being priced about $23 to $32. Um, and then again, Amazon gets the, the 40% their, their pricing, and then you get paid. And it goes directly to your checking account. You can set that up on the back end. So cool. you can pretty much create the book, put it on the platform, go to sleep, wake up, and have money in the bank. Don't we love that? It's like mailbox money. I, I know that kind of dates me because we don't get, you know, money in our mailbox anymore, but you know what I'm talking about, right? Mailbox money. That's what yeah. that is. And yeah. isn't that what we're all going for, where we can have a passive income stream or two or 70 that, you know, lets us do more of what we want to do as, you know, things are still getting taken care of on the, on the bill front. So yeah. I love that. Yeah, definitely. So the key thing is um, going to be your marketing promotion. Because Amazon and all of these platforms have tons of people that have created creating their books. Um, it's not going to be as easy as you creating the book and putting it on the platform and then all of a sudden the sales start coming in. Mm -hmm. You really want to focus on developing a marketing plan. And you can do this by using your social, social media, um, creating an email marketing campaign, um, and do uh, book launch strategies. Um, and even mm -hmm. go a step further, tell everybody. Anybody and everybody who wants to know that you've created a book, let them know. And I would start doing that in advance where you're creating it to kind of get the word out there. So you kind of create a little bit of a um, like a buzz, 
a buzz. A tell your network, network, tell your friends, tell your family. Those are the people that are absolutely going to support you. And, you know, it's word of mouth is everything I feel like. So you tell one person, they tell two, they tell two, they tell three, you know what I mean? And then all of a sudden it starts to grow from there. What about yeah. book signings? Would you suggest getting those scheduled and on the books? <laughs> See what I did there? Um, you know, in the calendar, I should say, um, yeah. you know, prior to launch or how do, how do book signings work? And, 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 and are there any other ways of promoting the book that we haven't talked about or you haven't mentioned? Yes. So what you could do if you create a book, say you create a book in gardening um, and you follow an influencer who has a large audience um, on social media, Mm. you could send her the book and say, I created this book. I'd like to gift it to you. Let me know what you think about it and maybe create a conversation where she talks about her book on her next show, her next YouTube channel. And then that helps to create a buzz going um, along with her giving you a review or a testimonial. Um, So you can use influencers to help um, guide uh, guide those sales a little bit. I love Um, that. That's a great idea. And it makes me think of even joining groups, whether it be on Facebook or, you know, there's a variety of platforms out there where you can network with people based on a niche or based on a genre. So if you're writing a book on gardening, you probably already belong to a hundred gardening groups. So there's a, that's a great audience to start dropping seeds. (laughs) I am just funny today. (laughs) Corny funny, but Right. So that's a, that's a great place to start dropping those hints too. Right. Yes, definitely. And anybody that might be, that's complimenting to your niche, it doesn't necessarily even have to be in that direct sector, but if it's relative to their audience, you can borrow from their audience in that same way. Um, As well as giving it out to a friend or family member who also likes to garden and it's just word of mouth. You know, she picks it up. She tells her friend, they tell their friend, all of a sudden you have people purchasing your book just through word of mouth because it was um, gifted to, to your friend or your family member. Oh, I love that. And then you made me think of something else. So Diana, I'm sorry. We're going to have to have you come back on and talk about podcasting because this topic had in channels, because this topic has kind of taken, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, which is great. We've really, really done a deep dive and I love it. And we're getting a ton of comments. Thank you guys out there for watching us. I know that this is something that a lot of people have been really excited to learn about. So thank you for, for being here about that. Um, we're, we'll do the podcast another day if that's okay with you. Um, but what about connecting with book clubs? There's book clubs all over the place where they read a book a month and they get together and talk about it, things like that. Where can we find those? Do you have any suggestions on that? Yes. So you can look on Eventbrite, anything in your area that tells you that there's um, some, an event that's happening, search Google. You know, I love Google for finding events like this. Even if you are in the position where you can purchase books for inventory, reach out to your local bookstore. Mom and pop shops love stuff like that. Great idea. Little, little cafes that might have magazines and books. Ask them if they could leave something like that and you can leave business cards. Anywhere that somebody is going to allow you to leave a book. Dental offices. Um, anywhere that we're, you're going to be in a reception, they're going to be sitting. You can ask them, hey, would you be willing to let me leave my book here while your, your customers, your clients sit. And then instead of flipping through a magazine of, you know, people people. or whatever. Yeah. (laughs) That's a captive audience. And you just, you just gave me an idea. I don't know if this is way too lofty or if it's just hilarious, but what about small airlines? Yes. You could stick it in the back pocket, you know, Mm -hmm. like, I don't know if Southwest would do it, but there are smaller airlines that I don't know, maybe they're looking for something like that and they would put it in the, in the back pockets of their seats for, Like I said, anywhere where people are going to be sitting for an expanded period of time and they have nothing to do rather than be on their telephone, if you have a book available to them that they can flip through, and then like I said, business cards not too far or a way that they can purchase the book or get in contact with you to to find out more about how to purchase would be ideal. 
I love it. You have given me, and I know you have given our listeners a bunch of ideas, and this is so exciting. Is there anything regarding self-publishing a book, marketing a book, getting your word out about your book that we didn't go over that we should? Um, I'm not sure. Oh, I know. Creating a landing page. If you are not in a position to create a website, you can create a landing page. And I'll go over quickly. Covert kit, card spelled with two R's, craft, site one, two, three, Landbot or Wix. These are all free platforms that you don't need any code and you can create a link like a link tree for people to go get more information so they can click on your Amazon link and that sort of thing. So you can expo- get more exposure free of charge. Um, and I just wanna add to this because we didn't get to talk about podcasts. If you're thinking about creating a podcast or a channel, you can use a lot of these tools in very much the same way. Mm-hmm. You're just creating video content versus a book. So if you're thinking about that, you can always borrow from these tools. I love it. And I'm guessing when we have you back on to talk about creating a channel and, and creating a podcast, you can put those all together and have them all work um, simultaneously to expose your brand even further. Absolutely. Oh, I'm so excited for the next time we're going to have you on. I got to get you on the schedule like ASAP because I can't wait for that talk. (laughs) Yeah, sounds great. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for all of that information. Like I said, we have a bunch of comments on the live here. So when you have an opportunity, if you can just uh, circle back and and answer their questions. I know they would absolutely love to hear from the expert. Where can we connect with you, Diana, if we have more questions, if we want to throw an idea up against you? Um, You know, also, does this might be a really great time for you to talk a little bit about what you do and what your business is, and does your business help others with this type of thing? Yes, it does. Um, So I have a business called I Create Me. It's a design studio. I help new and existing business owners discover their creative edge. I'm dedicated to delivering exceptional designs, resources, and tools to help you elevate your brand products and services. So absolutely reach out to me through Facebook, or um, I'll leave extra information in the comment box. Ask me any questions that you need. I'd be happy to guide you through Canva, through any of the resources, through the KDP. I'm an open book. (laughs) Yes, I love um, it. Thanks so much for having me here. And like I said, I'm just a click away. We love having you. And the more we share, the more we grow together. And that is so super important. Thank you so much for supporting women in business out there. It's really near and dear to my heart. So I appreciate you and what you're doing. I also have your Facebook page link in the show notes here. So guys, um, listeners out there, if you want to connect with Diana, and I highly suggest that you do click on that link and connect with her at I Create Me. If you want to, oh, you really want to, because you want to see Diana again, when we talk about podcasts and creating channels. So hop on over to our YouTube channel. It is at mom nation USA and hit the subscribe little bell, all of the things that you need to do there to get notified when we have additional shows. You can also scroll down just a little bit and you will see our live and learn playlist. That's where you're going to find Diana's episode from today and also her previous episode from a couple of weeks ago. She is awesome. So definitely check that out. If you are more of the podcast type, you would prefer to listen like I do, like I'm you know working out or out for a walk or doing my laundry, whatever. I love to have it in my ears. Then you can find us on your favorite podcast platform. Just do a quick search for Mom Nation Talk Radio. You can connect with all of our shows there. And Diana, thank you so much. Thanks. Have a good day, guys. Bye. Bye.